Today with me, I have a brand new Infiniti QX60, and this is a luxury midsize three row crossover from Infiniti that's right in between their QX80 and their QX50. And this also competes head on with the Acura MDX and the Lexus RX and the Germans like the BMW X5. It is a very competitive segment. Today, I'm gonna to show you the ins and outs of this QX60, also take her out on the road for a drive, and finally conclude with the good and bad and ugly, so you guys could decide if this is the right luxury mid-size crossover for you. Stay tuned. I wanna give a big shout out to my friends at Infinity of Naperville for making this video possible. If you guys are in the market for a brand new or used Infinity, definitely check out this dealership. The information and the link is in the description below. So let's take a look at the side view of this QX60. Because this is a limited edition, you get this special 20 inch alloy wheels, right? They do have a shadow chrome finish to them, which actually looks really nice, especially with this beautiful paint. This is a special 2019 paint. It's called Imperial Black. And I'm gonna show you this at an angle because at an angle in the light, it's actually kind of purplish. Now, besides those things, you do see a lot of chrome, right, around the window, the handles, the bottom bar, and then privacy glass. And finally, you do see this integrated roof rack, although my complaint about this is this is plastic. A lot of cars now have beefy aluminum integrated roof racks. Not this. This is plastic. Moving to the front of this QX60, you do see a couple things that's just for the limited edition, such as this chrome surround over here and over here they're kind of like a shadow chrome not an actual chrome so it's a little bit darker now besides that you do get a huge infinity emblem and there is a camera over here and i'm going to show you guys that what that's used for once i get inside you do see a couple of parking sensors on the bottom and overall the design language from the side move, carries over to the front right it's kind of round not a whole lot of edges but i do think these headlights make it look a bit more aggressive because of how they're shaped, right? And you do get HIDs and daytime running lights as well. All right, moving on to the back of the QX60, because this is Imperial Black, obviously the chrome pops out right at you. Um, you do see the privacy glass, the spoiler over here. You do get a backup camera over here, the parking sensors, and that's pretty much it back here. The taillights is kind of shadowed, right? I like that. One thing that's missing that I wish it had was some kind of chrome tips, right? Exhaust tips, chrome surround, something that's down there. I think that would really pop out and there's nothing for that. So moving on to the tailgate, because this is a, a luxury edition, of course, it does have a power lift gate. It also has a feature where you can activate it with your foot. So for example, you go back here, you're carrying something, right? You put your foot underneath like that and voila, it opens and that actually activated the first time around some of these other cars that have this i would try multiple times and it still would not activate now back here because this is a three row this is a three row crossover you do have a pair of seats so when they're when they're up like this you still have a good amount of space back here you could see it you know good enough for grocery bags or a couple of luggages right and of course if you wanted to fold it down it's actually pretty easy you just lift this up and push it down now, you might be thinking, how do you get it up? There's no nothing to pull, right? And that's where the buttons on the side actually fold it back up. Really nice. However, you do have to wait. You have to wait a while, right? Some kind of manual setup would be much faster. Of course, when it folds down, it's manual. But when it comes back up, you have to wait for it. Now down here, you do have a little bit of space, right? This is really convenient. You could put bags of groceries or whatever you want to hide. All right, so I'm in the second row. You guys could see I'm five feet 10. So still plenty of leg room, plenty of uh, headroom with shoulder room is good. The seats, right? They can lean forwards and backwards and you can move this forward and backwards if you wanted to, to generate more space for the third row, right? Um, the seats themselves, because this is leather from the, the limited edition, this leather looks amazing. It's white, it's stitched in a diamond fashion, and it just looks really good. They do feel a little bit uh, slippery though, so uh, you could probably slide around pretty easily. But outside of that, it's nice. This does have the theater package, so you guys could see 
two large eight inch screens on the back of the headrest, right? Really good for the kids or anyone that's back here. Let me show you the controls over here. For the theater system, of course you need to plug in. So take a look at the controls here. You do have a regular outlet for whatever your game system, iPad, whatever you want to charge. You have another outlet here, kind of cigarette out, um, outlet. You control your volume here, right? Your headsets plug in over there. You do have an HDMI port. You have a USB port and you got a couple of controls here or switches for heated seats. Now up here, you do have the vents. You can control your own temperature over here or you could set it to auto. So one huge advantage back here is the seat and how to get into the third row. So take a look at this. All you have to do is lift this up, right? And then push forward and that's it. Look at how much space is over here, right? Nothing to impede your way to get in the back. This is completely flat, right? Plenty of space to get in back there. And the way this folds and moves forward, you can actually do this when there's a car seat here, which is really amazing. So if you have a car seat here, this still folds kind of, it folds as much as it can, and then it moves forward, which is really, really nice. Now remember when I said the Imperial Black looks different in the sun at an angle? So take a look. Does it? Take a look. Doesn't this look purple? So <laughs> at an angle in the sunlight, this Imperial Black actually looks like a dark purple. However, if you move away from the car, it actually looks completely black. So that's unique. It, it actually changes color. Now moving on to the front, you can see that the beautiful leather stitch seats, right? And the door panels and the armrests, they stick out right away. This white looks absolutely gorgeous. The contrast between the black console and the dash, right? With the white leather looks amazing. And then the diamond stitching, right? Also really pops out. So that's one thing that you notice right away on this limited edition. And take a look at the doors, right? Same thing, diamond stitching on the side here, right? This gorgeous uh, wood trim that carries over in the inside. Right? I just wanted to give you guys a glance of that before I move in. All right, so this is what it looks like on the inside. Here's the steering wheel. It is leather, but it does feel kind of slippery, right? And I'm gonna see how that is once I'm driving. Um, you do get the usuals, right? The controls uh, for source, volume. Um, you do get to change the menu that's up there, right? While you're driving, you could see a whole bunch of information. And then this is for intelligent cruise control. Right, you could turn it on and then accelerate, decelerate. Um, it could actually follow people at a distance here. And this button, actually, you could see on the top, right? You could see those three things come up, right? One is for emergency braking, one is for keeping you in the lane, and one is for your blind spot monitor. Now, moving on to the side, right? And in the middle here, you do see this large screen. Now, this is touch, okay? But you could see it's a little bit laggy. And then also the maps, the navigation, uh, looks a little, little dated. I think it's more of a resolution thing, right? It's not using, say, something like Google Maps. Um, but you do get a nice interface. You, it is both touch and controlled by the buttons, which is nice, right? Because sometimes you just want to hit buttons. You don't want to mess with touch, right? And then you do have a whole bunch of controls here. This is for auto climate. You can adjust it here, defrosters. Um, climate control you could press it on or off right you could adjust it however you want you could adjust it on the screen or down here right you can have there's manual buttons for pretty much everything the map audio navi right so everything it even has apps but it doesn't have apple carplay or android auto those things are missing now down here you actually still have a cd player which you don't see many of those anymore. Uh, start stop button over here, radio, disc, media, you can control that here. There's just some cubby hole here. There's no wireless charging. A uh, couple of cup holders. You get a standard shifter, which is nice. It's not something that you have to relearn. This is very simple. Over here, you could control a few things. Uh, this is for uh, heated seats and cooled seats, right? Two, le three levels on each side. This is to control your throttle. You could put in sport mode or econ mode, and it doesn't change suspension or anything like that. It just changes your throttle. That's pretty much it. Now, over here, armrest, you can open just the upper or lower, which is pretty big, right? And you get a couple of USB, uh, USB ports, right? 
audio in, video in, and even uh, SD card for your navigation. Now up here, you do have dual moon roofs, okay? This one is a moon roof, sun roof. It actually opens traditionally. The back one you control over here, it does open so you can let the sun in, but it does not open to let the air in, right? But it is pretty big. Uh, it's a panoramic one. It goes all the way to the third row, but there is this bump in the middle, right? And that's because this is for this, and then that is for that, right? Um, and you close it like this, and then there is SOS over there. So if you need it, if you got an emergency, uh, you got an accident, you need to call local services, you could press that and something for your uh, your sunglasses. And also down here, right, you can see button for a lift gate. You could turn off the outlet in the second row. You could turn off the beeping, right, for your uh, parking sensors. This is heated steering wheel and this is for traction control. All right, next up, let's go for a drive and see how this QX60 does on the road. All right, guys, so I'm behind the wheel. First thing is, first impression is how nice everything looks in here, right? Of course, I showed you guys the really nice stitch leather, white and black contrast along with the trim. I mean, just sitting here makes you feel special. Um, it is definitely a luxury vehicle. Now, even the dash layout, like as I'm driving, I could definitely see that everything is within reach. The big buttons are easy to understand and get to. And something that's really nice is the fact that the screen is touch. And that is, that is a big addition because a lot of these luxury cars with navigation screens still, you have to use the knobs, right? Sometimes you just want to touch it and that is really nice. In terms of the CVT, those of you guys who haven't driven a CVT before, it takes a little bit of getting used to because at low RPMs, when you're flooring it, it just feels like it's going forever. You, you hear this kind of like, or you feel kind of like this, this tone, this drone that's like that, right? And it doesn't really shift until you get up to a certain point and then it goes down because CVT continuous various transmission is not supposed to shift although infinity have made it so that if you're really flooring it right it will simulate shifts but at low speeds it won't so it, it does get uh it does take getting used to it is very quiet in here and i have been in a nissan pathfinder for a long time because that's my what my wife drives right uh, one of the big differences is how quiet it is in here versus the Pathfinder. You could definitely tell Infinity put a lot more insulation. You really can't hear even even the engine. It's like nothing. The the, the droning from the CVT is barely noticeable, and also exhaust, outside wind noise, nothing. You don't hear any of that. So it is super quiet in here. In terms of the seats, right? Not not only do they look gorgeous right with the white stitching and it just looks uh really nice but also feels nice it definitely right even with the armrest that matches you feel it and it just feels really nice one complaint though is the fact that it is kind of slippery right and the seat is designed to be big and uh and comfortable but it doesn't really hold you in right so the bolsters are kind of wide right and the seat uh, cushions are also kind of wide so when you're sitting on here uh, cruising it's very very comfortable however for me even and I'm fairly large when I'm making a turn um, I'm like moving around I'm sliding around in the seat so that is uh, that is a negative all right in terms of acceleration just floored it and it, it's not that quick i would say this is right in between uh i've reviewed a lot more suvs specifically compact suvs that's a lot more underpowered this car this suv comes with a 3.5 liter v6 pushing about 294 uh, 295 horsepower and 270 pound feet of torque which is up a little bit compared to say a nissan pathfinder it is more than adequate to get up to speed, but it isn't the quickest SUV out there. 
Now I have my cool seats on, okay, and uh, and it's not even that hot today, but I just turned it on. It's really nice. I could feel my butt really nice and cool right now. So those of you guys, a lot of you guys probably had cars with heated seats, but uh, when you have cool seats, it's just that much better, especially on a hot day with leather. Now, in terms of the brake, it feels pretty good. Unlike most cars I've driven where, you know, the car kind of stops after a halfway or three quarters of way when you step on a brake pedal, this one is more like a quarter to a half. So it does stop a lot quicker, something that you just have to get used to. Now, something that's missing from this car that I wish was an option is some kind of heads up display, which a lot of luxury cars now have and even non-luxury car manufacturers are putting into their cars. So that is not available and I really wish that would be added um, because it is super convenient and also makes things very safe. So you can see everything in your vision. So hopefully Infinity adds that as an option later on. Now in terms of suspension, um, it's kind of right, it's tuned right in the middle. And what I mean by that is it, it is firm, right? It is firm so that when you go over large potholes, um, you do feel it a bit more, but it's also not too soft, which means that if you're taking a corner, you're, you're lane changing, you don't feel a whole lot of body roll. So it's kind of like right in between, which is nice because along with the heavier steering feel, right, it does make the, the SUV feel a bit more sporty. Something else that's pretty cool, and some of you guys may get freaked out by it at first, but if you, there's a button on the steering wheel, right? I showed you guys that this kind of turns on all the safety features. One of them is this uh, emergency braking, right? If the car detects that you're not gonna brake, it will brake for you, right? Um, that is pretty cool. Actually, I just felt it a couple of times. I purposely, I hovered my foot over the brake, but I didn't brake. And you could definitely feel the car sensing that it, you need some, uh, <laughs> you need some help and it starts breaking for you that's pretty cool obviously you can't rely on that solely you guys have to pay attention but for those times where hey you know you're distracted or whatever it really really will help i purposely i wanted to test out this this lane keep system right to make sure that you're within your lane and if you doze off that you're gonna get worn and it does work pretty well as long as it could see the lines so I tried both the left line and the right line, right, to see what happened. First of all, you get a beep, right? You feel feedback in the steering because the car tries to correct itself. It will actually turn back for you. And it also applies light braking for you so that uh, you don't just swerve out of there. So it does a few things right away to make sure that you stay within your lanes and that you're alerted. All right, guys, let's conclude with the good, the bad, and the ugly about this QX60. In terms of the good, there's definitely a lot. First of all, as soon as you sit in here, you feel like a king or a queen, right? It actually does look really luxurious in here, especially these leather seats, the con uh, the armrests, the door panels. I'm in, lo in love with this leather. And overall, the dash layout, the console, everything just makes you feel like you're in a luxury SUV. Now, other things that are good, you get a very smooth ride. It is on the sporty side, which I like. The steering feel is a little bit firmer. The suspension is a little bit firmer. So it's a bit more engaging. Same thing with the pedals. Uh, the brake, it catches on a little bit quicker. Acceleration, also pretty good. The only thing is you have to get used to the CVT transmission, which at first a lot of people might not like or might not get, but once you get used to it, it's actually pretty good. Now, other good things is the space, right? Inside, plenty of space, all three rows. And the way the second row folds down makes it really easy to get in the third row, even if you have car seats and not a whole lot of SUVs can do that. And in the trunk, you get plenty of space. Now, in terms of exterior, I actually like it. I think it looks pretty good. There are modern edgy cues, although overall body style is pretty round, right? But I am in love with this color, this Imperial Black. It's really amazing how it kind of changes color, right? And I think it fits the car really well. Now, in terms of the bad, there's a few. Starting from the outside, the roof rack being plastic. I'm not a fan of that. On the inside, a few things are kind of dated and not available. For example, heads-up display, that is not available, right? Uh, 
Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay not available. So those are things I would like to see get added in the future. Also, things like um, things that I'm not even a fan of, such as Ninja Auto Stop, that's not available as well. And also in terms of entertainment, right? I do like the fact that it is both touch and also controlled by button. However, the interface seems a little bit slow, right? When you're moving around with touch, it does lag a little bit. And that's it for the bad, uh, really nothing else. And in terms of the ugly, there's absolutely nothing. There's nothing that I think needs to be changed right away. Now, in terms of the price, because this has every single available option out there, this is coming in around $66,000. Of course, there are lower trims that have a whole bunch of this, right? It just really depends on what you guys are looking for. All right, guys, that is it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this review. Make sure you hit the like if you did, and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye.